Gather round, children. Gather round. I got a game to show you. Not wine today. We have actual green tea, Sencha to be exact. So that's nice. <laughs> uh, today I want to show you a blitz game. I don't show you a whole lot of blitz games, and, that, and it's blitzish. It's not even. It's it's not that fast, but still fast enough. Uh, and I actually played a game on OGS, so hey, let's do that. <laughs> That'll be fun. So we have a Blitzish game on OGS against a Fordon. If you've been following this channel recently, you know I've sort of been just killing and and sandbagging the the you know mostly I guess three Dons is where we're at right now on Tygem on my my fun account, my drinking account. <laughs> I guess is what we should call it. Uh, the four dons on OGS are are much tougher. This is like, yeah, the servers are are <laughs> very different in terms of their their softness of ranks. So four don four dons are thorny on OGS. But anyway, uh, this is still it's still a good game. And the reason I want to show you this is that oh man, I make a mistake, a thirty plus point mistake, arguably, uh, and it's a mistake I keep making. And it's a mistake that I've made before in uh, so many, like, like it's, just, it's just a shape that I keep just effing up in, in one of the drinking games, in one of the wine uh, review games. I, may, I do the same thing, and I lose a group because of it. And uh, if I have foot, if I can go find footage of that, I'll roll footage right now to show you uh, maybe some of that mistake uh, from that video. But anyway, I won't spoil it too much. Let's just dig into this game. It is a pretty good game overall. And man, it's a game that I'm, you know, I get to this point where I'm, I'm the robot says I'm up about 40 points on this Fordon. And oh man, make a 30 point mistake. And uh, all right, we'll, 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 we'll save the ending for, for the end. All right, so here we go. In, in this game, I am black, and uh, I'm playing, you know, a little, a little fast here, um, but totally appropriate. I've got stones in all four corners already. Look at, look at how fast I go. I've been playing a lot of this one. I like this one. It's super roboty, Joseki, and I play here. Um, in this position, the robot also likes moves here or here. Like basically, play anything over here, and the robot's totally cool. Um, and I've reviewed this one before. This is sort of like new hotness, you know, made possible by robots. You know, if we go back, you know, five years, this was ghastly, right? This shape for black. Uh, but it turns out it has it has enough wiggle room to just be fine. <laughs> so everybody plays it now. All right. Black me. I'm black. Hey. Uh, take the upper right-hand corner and also try to reach out to the scraggly bits of stones I have in the upper left. And my opponent immediately jumps in. Like, like he is aggressive and we'll see the same pattern happen on the bottom. Very tight, aggressive style pincers. Uh, of course, in this case, the tight pincer is warranted because it sets up a nice extension if he needs to make a base. Um, but yeah, he's, he's got strength. He's already played a little bit of, you know, over-concentrating moves, so he needs, to, he needs to take advantage of that strength and attacks directly, and that's fine. I play here, this move's okay. The robot prefers to actually do this. Um, which I think is interesting, and you know, just make shape. You don't really have points here, um, but also if white just tries to make a base, black's gonna get this entire outside, like quite nicely, with something like this. So, you know, this is this is fine. Like I think everybody is it's okay. Like there's no super danger dangerous things, um, but black's still pretty happy. Um, meanwhile, we both really want sente, right? Because this bottom left hand corner is a little bit unstable. So anyway, I counter pincer and go on the attack, and he plays this one, and I play this one, which is okay. Again, these moves are okay. White gets a little bit tiny advantage, like a one or two point advantage here through the opening, um, but I win it back pretty soon, actually, so we'll uh, look at that. Robot says I should make this exchange first and just ask here. Um, since black is already so solid, it's very unlikely that I'll have some sort of other play down here. Uh, so just, this is good timing. You know, ask, hey, can I have a base, by the way? And Black says no, or white says no, and I go, okay, then I'll then I'll continue on with my plan. Uh, and meanwhile, in endgame, if I do something, let's say black, sorry, man, white, I can't get, col colors are so hard! 
White takes this point. This is actually a really nice corner for White. There's very little black can do here, and uh, it's you know just ruins my shape here, right? I don't I don't have any eyes basically. So if I can get this exchange for free, even though it also might not guarantee eyes, it also just pokes a hole in White's corner shape, and so I have some Aji to take advantage of later. Minor detail, minor detail. Later on, uh, the reason why I have to do this now is if I make this group entirely safe, if I link up, and then I press here, White's not going to respond. White's going to find the biggest move on the board. So that's why this move is so important right now. Uh, white's already solid. There's very little other things for me to do here. So I just have to ask. I have to I have to use that Aji right now. Totally hard to do if you're a Q. Don players, this is what like we're working on all the time. Like little exchange, like with the timing of those little exchanges, those asking moves. All right. Uh, I cut here. This move, again, like I said, is okay. Actually, in fact, if I made all the, um, a couple other exchanges, this is the preferred robot way. I'm just not making all the exchanges, playing it directly. And uh, this is pretty expected, this type of variation. And so I mostly, I basically get to link up. Uh, this, these are all safe, though there is Aji in here for white. Um, meanwhile, Aji, white gets a Panuki facing towards the center. I should totally use a different color for that. However, I still have a little bit of Aji here with a potential to cut through later. So this is, everybody's strong enough right now. Like this area has been made completely uninteresting at this point. Everybody's settled. Nothing much is going on. I didn't get a lot of points. I still have some Aji. White got some strength, but it's not super duper strong. So it's fair. <laughs> so we continue. Uh, White does come away with Sente. Um, and this is expected, right? Because I did Tanuki this position all the way to here. And White, of course, uses that Sente to go after the lower left. And am I still recording? Oh man, I'm, I'm always scared of not recording. That's always scary. Okay, uh, white pincers these two stones. Again, aggressive, like very aggressive. Kick, pincer. I, you know, I don't know, this is another like stylistic thing that I should probably do more of in my own games. When I'm, when I'm pincering something like this, I tend to prefer looser pincers. This is more of my style, but totally good move. I do this sort of light leaping out move and my opponent makes a mistake. And so after this move, this actually swings that little one or two point advantage that white had back into black's favor. Um, I don't take advantage of it great, but there's going to be a couple mistakes piled on here, and then white's going to make a really greedy mistake that that uh, you know I I don't know I don't this was kind of late ish at night I don't know I don't know if he if the Ford on was playing you know some some wine wine and go <laughs> or what but it seemed it seemed kind of silly I'll show you what I mean in a moment. I play here. I should play this immediately, and I don't. Um, but I should. I should try to make this exchange right now. Again, those little timing things. Instead, I go to pincer. White investigates the Aji here, and I play here. White descends. That's that's too optimistic. This is still not really fixing White's Aji problems enough, and exchanging these two stones is actually good for Black. Right, because now I absolutely have a connection linking up to that stone if I want it. Um, and white still has Aji weaknesses to poke and prod at. So not not white's best work. Again, these little minor mistakes do add up to a black advantage of a few, of, of a of you know, I think it I think the robot said something like four or five points. So significant, significant. Um, since white has such a more difficult time attacking now. Anyway. Uh, white fixes a little bit, and I say a little bit because there's still this Aji problem. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a thing. <laughs> um, I don't really take advantage of it well. Um, but again, Black should have already exchanged this move for this one at this point. I play here, this is fine. Again, the robot wants me to do something a little more active and continue here um, with a move like this. First, to ask, you know, what kind of shape do I have to to mess around with? This move's still okay. Um, here, I play here, and again, this is fine. Again, the robot still wants me to, to take advantage and just poke at these cuts. Even if I just throw a stone away, uh, this is more like a probe. Like, I'm asking White, okay, what do I, what do I got for me? Like, like, are you going to give me eyes, or are we going to have to fight? <laughs> And if white just says, no, no, you have eyes, I'm going to fight very differently than if white says, no, nothing for you. <laughs> and it turns out the nothing for you line is real hard for white to play. 
Um, because after these exchanges, you can actually start to see <laughs> that these two stones are uh, having having issues, right? And, <laughs> you know, if white plays proper... <laughs> actually, I don't know what the next best move is for anyone. Uh, I think it's still just Aji. I think it's just still just come out or, or maybe even push through here. Um, I still have Aji. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure what the timing is to do these. Uh, but as long as I have cuts and liberties, I'm going to expect that White, yes, will be able to kill everything with some work, and I'll just be able to come out and probably around here. Like, I'll, I'll get out much further if White leaves that Aji there. That's my expectation. Anyway, uh, White responds here. Let me get rid of that blue mark. I push again. White responds again. I should still be poking at these points. Like, these are still weak points. Instead, I play here. It's okay. Not a big loss, but... Robot, again, wants to milk every little bit of Aji, find every little uh, bit of initiative, and ask every question along the way. And I'm not, I'm not fully doing that. And so, again, this is what I have to do to improve my game. I have to, I have to you know, really weigh these little, these little cuts and when to take them. Of course, uh, the, time, the time settings for this, uh, it's... Um, what style is it? Is it Fisher? I don't remember. It's the one where... You have 15 seconds, you would get 15 seconds per move, but you cap out at 45 seconds, whichever one that's called. Um, so again, on average, you have to play 15 seconds a move. Um, and if you don't, you bank your time, but you can only bank up to 45 seconds worth. So every move has to be played within a, a maximum of 45 seconds, and most of them have to be played less than that. So again, blitzish, like kind of a game. Um, you know, a lot of Blitz games are just train wrecks. And, and this one maybe is maybe turns into a train wreck, but I thought, it again, it had some, certainly, if not for you, some very teachable moments for myself because, you know, gosh darn it, I keep effing up this, like, this one part of the game. Anyway, uh, White chooses to go up the two stones here, and this is not bad. Uh, you know, White doesn't really have a whole lot of choices here. If White connects. White's just going to get attacked even more. Again, I still have this little Aji here. It's it's real hard. It's it's a fight. Like, it's a fight. <laughs> so White chooses to give up, and notice I don't have a lot of liberties here with this group. So, even though White is sort of giving my dragon a lot of strength here, you know, White should be able to stabilize this weak group in the process. Uh, and White starts by playing here. I play here, and there's this push cut. Uh, now, at this point, I make a small mistake, at least according to the robot. Um, the robot says I should play here and play something like this and fight this way, basically. And this, this you know, looks pretty good. These two stones are real weak, but again, I really have to change my color. I don't like this blue anymore. <laughs> um, but again, I have two targets. And it's really hard for white to do anything with these two stones at this point. Whoops. After uh, I make these exchanges. So it's a fight. I have the weakest group of all of them. But, you know, white has two weaknesses. So it should be fine. Uh, and, th and that's that's apparently basically the best line. Instead, I play this one. Thinking, oh, I'll let white make a little group here, and then I'll get something strong here, and then I'll counterattack. And indeed, that's almost what happens. <laughs> uh, in part because white kind of doesn't play optimally. This move is actually a slight minus. I didn't think about this during the game. Um, but it's better for black to play this one. It just it just prevents uh, one other possible exchange for white. And it, and it looks so dumb. Like, this is so dumb. But imagine if white is trying to live down here, right? Can you imagine? This move prevents white from extending all the way this far, right? The most white can now extend is there. And that is Sente, but that's fine. Uh, so white can get that. But let's say I play this one. Well, notice that in an emergency, white might actually be able to play that one. <laughs> And even though that's Gote, that might be the exact one liberty that White needs to make a living group down here, um, should it come to that. So, super mo like like oh, like, can you feel how how tiny and uh, minute this little difference is? Uh, but again, in the eyes of the robot, this makes a huge difference in terms of the viability of that White group. 
or at least how much, you know, white really has to squirm uh, to, to make shape. Uh, the best line for white here is to basically just capture the stone. And again, white's not completely alive. Uh, and there's a pretty serious attack now on this little dragon. Um, it's manageable. It's manageable. White doesn't do that, however. After I play here, white plays here. And this is this is a bad move. This is, I think, like a 10-point loss. Um, and from this point, for the next, I don't know, 20, 30 moves, uh, black's going to black's gonna amass a pretty commanding advantage to the tune of almost a 40-point lead on this board. And this is this is like the, the mistake that, you know, I feel like a Ford on OGS really shouldn't be making. And it's really the combination, right? It's really the committing to this group over here in a very small way like this. And so, yes, white can make this alive. We have a live group, um, but at what cost? It turns out this is also the not the best way to connect. It's to play this terrible looking thing. Um, and I say terrible, of course, because it leaves all this Aji. Um, what? Oh, Windows, go away. Sorry, Windows notifications are ruthless. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, so, you know, this is so ugly. Like, I know Q players love this, right? Double Tiger's Mouth. Like, Tiger, so strong. But no, it just leaves so much Aji. This one also leaves Aji, but it's, it's only one direction, right? You only get hit from one side. Um, but it turns out in this case, it's better. This is better. Uh, because the Aji here is pretty severe. Um, so white takes Sente, uh, before is basically do, doing all the asking, right? The thing I should have done up here in the top left corner, white is doing down here to make sure that white has to live first. Okay, then white comes back and lives. At this point, this is black's game to lose. If we are counting, uh, you can see that there's there's pretty, pretty clear uh, about 50-something points over here. And I don't know, this is like nothing. <laughs> And Comey. Um, so if we if we give White the benefit of the doubt, we should see about 60 points for White. And you're looking at this board and going, well, Black doesn't have 60 points. Correct. <laughs> but Black does have this nice thing to eat. Uh, even though this wall can be attacked, uh, Black does have a wall. And even though this is only like 20-ish points on this side, uh, that is, we, we, we can pretty be pretty certain to get at least 20 points up here. Uh, and we, most importantly, we have Sente. So we can extend from this wall, we can we can make something here, we have a target to attack while we're building. Man, if white just has to run, and you can imagine black just getting fourth line territory pretty easily here if white is just dedicated to running this out. Um, again, because this group is so strong now that I, I have no weaknesses. Um, basically, this side of the board will match this side of the board. And you can see that the other little bits of territory I'll accumulate here and here are bigger than whatever white gets down here. So, like, it, it's like, you know, it might, you, as a Q player, or, a, or even a Dom player, you might be looking at this whole left-hand side and go, oh my god, that's so big. But that's all that white has. And, you know, again, I have, at the end game, I still have moves like this, uh, possibly moves like this, that again, threaten to cut this off and come in. Uh, that that are real hard for white to to solidify effectively without giving up a few more points here in reduction. So again, don't be scared. We got Sente. We got all the things. I play here, and voila! Like we have we have we have some real framework going, and oh man, we have a good target. Of course, the robot doesn't really like this. <laughs> the robot says go after this more directly, um, but it doesn't hate this either. Like this is fine. It's a strategy. Here again, I'm just I'm just building very slowly, like <laughs> saying, "Look, you have to work real hard to make this into something alive." So I'm just gonna take my cash. And at this point, White's getting nervous. White's going, "Ah, look, you're building all the points. I need to do something." So we play this way, and again, this just almost guarantees the cash uh, over here, and possibly gives me another target. It's not the easiest thing to settle this group in Sente for White, so. Uh, we kick out the base, and white plays here. And this was this was a pretty interesting line. Definitely not what I was expecting. I was thinking at this point, white would sort of be on the run. 
And then I could come back and return to harassing this stick over here. This is kind of what I thought would happen. Uh, but white plays this for Maxim Aji. This turn is good. Uh, connecting, and this is the part where I kind of wimp out. I need to just stand. And if this happens, that's fine. Uh, I don't know actually the order if I should play here first or play over here, but either way, like, black is totally fine. I guess I should probably play one of these first and then kick here. Um, these two stones can't actually escape. It looks like they can escape, but they can't. <laughs> so... This is my failure to read, and just notice, oh yeah, this still kills the stone after this standing move. I do recognize this shape intuitively, like I have this intuition to, to stand here, which I do play here in a moment. Um, but I make these exchanges, and white gets that move before I stand, so it's not as effective. Um, but, yeah, in this, in this case, I feel a little bit behind, even though these stones are suffering real hard. <laughs> Uh, and these stones are not alive. Like, everything, and, and you know, white, if, granted, it's white's move, white has to do something over here. Um, like, it's a lot for white to manage. And, you know, it's, again, as far as the robot's concerned, like, black is way ahead. Like, this is, this is insurmountably impossible for white to catch up. According to the robots. All right, I play here. This is wrong. <laughs> Robot's favorite move. Just kill the stone. Just take it off. <laughs> and this makes me so nervous, especially in a blitzish game, because I have to read and figure out to make sure that this stick is okay. And it turns out it is. <laughs> like I was, I was a little bit overly concerned. Blackest has, or sorry, white has too many defects. Um, Black has too many weaknesses to exploit. Um, for white to actually kill this uh, wall. Of course, this wall will be left just kind of like cold and shivering it by itself and making two eyes, asking to make two eyes. But after all is said and done, man, white will still have a weak group here and white will still have a weak group here. And like, like again, this uh, black will have this stick just sticking in between them. I need another color. Oh yeah, let's get the, the big FU red, like right here. <laughs> Like, right in between the two weak white groups. So hard for white to manage. Um, the downside to this is that if I don't kill something, it's, or, or, you know, get real, make real inroads into the left-hand side somehow, it's real hard for black to have enough points now to, to um, combat the left. And, you know, that's what I have to expect, right? When I play moves like... Here and here, right? White and I both know that, oh, if I get the right, white gets the left, black still wins. Black still has every other advantage on the board. And so white is, you know, spinning his tires, trying to find any traction, right? To just not let anything happen. And that's why we get sort of not quite crazy moves, but, you know, real dangerous chaos making moves that aren't necessarily the best, but um, throwing the game in confusion. That's what, that's what white has to do. That's white's job. All right, here, I do respond here instead of taking this. Um, White's give me one other opportunity. I should still take this. This is still a good move. Um, but instead, I sort of see this shape, this, like, really crappy tiger's mouth, um, which lets me connect, right? Because as white, you both want to fill here to prevent a connection, and you want to play out here. White, of course, plays out here. Um, but that means black can always connect this way. So I don't have to ever worry about these stones ever again because I can connect out here, or I can connect out here. <laughs> and so in my mind, I played this way because I thought it guarantees life for my, my wall. It guarantees life for this group here. What it doesn't guarantee life for is these two stones. But you know what? I'm going to have Sente, and I have weak groups on both sides, so they should be fine. That was the reasoning. And it turns out, the robot agrees. Like, this is this is not the way the robot would play. It's not the best line. Um, I'm not quite... Like, like the robot thinks I should leave this a lot weaker and strengthen this. Not the prefer preferred line, but hey, this is still a major, major lead for black. All right, white plays there. I play here. Fantastic move. This is looking... Like, everything is 
coming to fruition, right? The prophecies have spoken. This group is getting weaker. This group is getting weaker. I have no problems other than I just have this one group to manage. I have one thing to manage, okay? Keep that in mind. I have one job in this game. <laughs> it's these stones. All right. <laughs> Keep your eye on the ball, people. White plays here. Okay. Like, that's fine. White's trying to help this side first. I jump out again. This is potentially a mistake already. Um, but it's, it's good enough. It's okay. It's okay. White's going to peep here. Again, White's trying to play on both sides simultaneously. All I have to do is stay strong. All I have to do is stay, stay strong. Unfortunately, the move I play is here. And this is a bad move. Uh, this is, I think the robot is fluctuating like 15, 20 points on this move, depending on who, and who, on my response to it. As foreshadowing here, I'll tell you that the robot wants to play this move. And I, I looked at this move in the game, like this should be every go player's intuition. You get peeped. How can you counterattack? Like, can you counter in some way and make your, and, and like find a way so you don't have to answer the peep. And, uh, you know, you still kind of eventually have to answer it. Like if white just blocks, you still have to do something. Um, but it turns out this exchange is really important to make. <laughs> so I play here and just stay strong and white plays here. And this is, I think, a, I don't I, like it. It's a bad move. Basically. It's like another, it's like some um, umpteen point loss for white. And I think at this point, uh, this is, um, like, well here, white plays this move and it's like a 30 point lead for black. I play this move. White responds. It's like, we're, we're like 37, a fractional point lead for black at this point, according to the robot. Like this board is great. This group st still so not alive. This group still so not alive. And do you remember it, people? Do you remember? I have one job. I have this thing. All I have to do is manage this one thing. And I don't do it. <laughs> Let's look at why. <laughs> I play here, and this was already kind of felt like a stretch, but, you know, the, the reasoning seems sound. It's like, look, this move helps connect. Uh, it, it pokes at the eye space, so making sure white can't get eyes on this side. This is the bigger side. If white wants to push and cut, I'm going to say that's fine. I've got this little stone here. I'm going to run this way, and I'm going to attack this while I'm sort of getting liberties and running with this group. However, this very next move... Again, this I think I think the robot says is a twenty nine point loss. This is this is not the right move, uh, and it all comes back to the fact that I didn't play this exchange um, because my my four down opponent and the robot play my biggest blind spot in Go apparently ever because I keep making this mistake and wedges the one space jump. Like ah, tear your heart out, tear tear your heart out. No, tear your hair out. Rip your heart out. Rip your hair out. I don't know. Do one of those things. Let's drink some tea and calm down. <laughs> oh, so frustrating. And again, this is a blitzish game. I don't have time to like, like settle myself. When, when white plays this, it's me just, you know, staring at the board like an ogre. No offense to ogres. Like, what am I going to do with this? And it turns out I'm still fine. Like this is still a winning position for black. And the way to continue it as a winning position is black is to, you know, Atari this way and connect here. And it looks like these four are dead. And this is what I read out. I was like, oh, I'm screwed. Like these four are dead. I'm not actually screwed. I have three liberties. I can cut here. This threatens to kill these two stones. So, uh, and again, it's a capturing race. If we do this, no problem, right? I, I win the capturing race, still win the game. So white can't just start a capturing race. White has to play this. If white has to play this, I can play this. And assuming white connects here, I can throw in, make the snap back. And, you know, white still needs another move here. And maybe I play something like this. And boom. I've, uh, I've killed four white stones on the right. This white group is still a little uncomfortable. Um, but it's not terrible shape. Um, I haven't quite read this all. I haven't thought if I could still have some play here to kill this. I don't think I do at this point, but, um, <laughs> I'll have to <laughs> look at that more closely. 
um, assuming that this is now fine. Uh, I, have to, I have to play something over here to really deal with this weakness after a move like this. Um, White will now have time to basically get this group out. I might be able to solidify, you know, maybe I can get a little bit of endgame here, um, you know, by sort of, you know, threatening this thing a little bit and this thing a little bit by poking through. Like, I have some options for endgame, but basically the territories are, are settled. Uh, this is not going to be worth much for anyone, you know, with the little cleanup that White has to left to do. White will get this, although there is... Uh, you know, black will get to um, come in the corner a little bit because of this cut. Actually, black probably won't cut at this point. It depends on, I don't know, it depends on, on um, how this goes. Because if I can push, I might still be able to cut here and get a good result. If not, I always have this move. Um, or I can just, you know, take this and send a two. Whatever. Um, probably this clamp is best. Um, and I still have this. But anyway, this whole left is white's. White is entitled to, I don't know, three points here. Maybe another three points here, and three points here, and Comey. So white has this, plus about 15 points. Uh, in black, we have this. This is all pretty settled at this point. And this is 25, 30. It's about 30 points. Plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Another 30 here. Um, not sure if there's any points here. Probably not, just because I still have to connect. Maybe another five here or so. Uh, so it's like 65 to 60. <laughs> like is about the game. <laughs> still good for black. Still good for black. Let's see what happened in the game. <laughs> uh, played here. And then I connected here. And then, oh God. <laughs> That means white gets to play here, of course. <laughs> Again, in my defense, I just was having a mental freak out because I just, again, effed up the whole wedge thing again and couldn't read this out <laughs> on my uh, my desperate mental state on a, on a blitzish timer. So we played here, and really there's not much left. Um... I make that exchange for no real reason. I try to I try to make a, a effort to to cut these off um, just to find something, but this is this is hopeless, right? Uh, I mean, I can kill white will happily <laughs> give these up. I can kill those for a few extra points, but number one, it's not really enough because well, well, in, in this case, it's really not enough because I haven't really linked up this group anymore. And once I play here, um, if I take these off the board. Uh, White's just going to play here and, you know, I'm just toast. Or potentially maybe play an exchange or two over here just to, um, you know, so, to shore up this white group while also attacking. And I'm still just toast. Like, still no good. Um, so I play a few more moves and basically just resign here. It's, it's too hard. Um, and the robot agrees at this point. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a moment where before I do all this, um, like right around here where the robot's like, you know, it's not so bad. You're down by, you know, a little less than Comey. Um, but once I, once I just sort of barbarian my way into killing or threatening to kill, cause I don't even play the killing blow here, move against this group. Uh, this is too hard, too hard, um, for black to, to maintain control and life in the center. Um, so at this point now, you know, white is up by over 10. So, um, yep. How do we feel? Whew, we feel bad. We feel bad. But I'm making this video again, in part, just because, and let me just do it with all the colors. I need, I need to be reading this out so much more than I am. Like I, I play it while it's, while it's totally safe. And then I forget about it and it happens and so many games to me. Apparently, this is how to beat Nick Sabicki. Is this let him make a one space jump, let him forget about it, and then poke a hole in it? <laughs> oh, I already used red. I don't want red again. What color? We need some purple. <laughs> oh, right. I should be using like all these other shades. I have like that oh dark purple, and and that's what I'm not doing. I'm using all these like you know kindergarten colors, but I have all these other uh, hues. No, I have the their hues. They're shades. I think they're shades. Right? Shades are lightness, darkness. Hues are the color part 
learn something new every day. Um, oh, wait, what's this? There, oh, there's saturation hue and... Someone tell me in the comments. Hue, hue, saturation, and shade, right? I think those are the three attributes. Um, get, my, get, my, get my artists in here. <laughs> tell me about my, my color choices. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, it was one of those tough late night losses. Uh, you know, I was not drinking wine, so that was always good. <laughs> Although, again, um, yeah, I think, I think I probably learned better from the games where I'm not drinking wine and playing. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this game. Hope you learned something. And, uh, you know, just happy going. <laughs> <laughs>